My name is Aaron Folletta and I'm joined with my co-host John Hunter and today we are going to be going over the Carlos Toronto Exodus 1959 which I've actually had one of these before and I have to say this is an, a fantastic cigar. I mean you, you look at that beautiful chocolate brown wrapper very little veins on it mm -hmm. and I mean, even the even the banding you know that's the one thing that actually annoys the hell out of me extra little coverage oh, the, oh yeah this one yeah yeah no the one thing that annoys me about these bands some of them on especially a lot of those cheap cigars yeah. and you know what i'm talking about because <laughs> we'll get to that story here a little bit later but uh some of those bands i mean they just get extremely extravagant and yeah. then the cigar tastes like shit yeah so it kind of fools you a little bit i've definitely been fooled by a band more than one time oh i know that actually there was one where he he came up here to to test it out. Well, I test out a different one, and come to find out that he took what was it three, three puffs off it. Yeah, three puffs off it and then puked. Yeah, I mean if that doesn't say shitty. I don't know. I don't know what I, does. I, I think I spent like seven dollars on that cigar. So it's come to tell you that a price on a cigar doesn't really mean anything. It's all about what you really care about in a cigar no and and that's 100 percent true i have had i've had 30 dollar cigars that uh made me want to vomit yeah they're just all over the floor mm -hmm. everywhere but aside to, and getting away from the the nastiness yeah. of it we're going to get to this one because this one i have had before you've had before mm -hmm. and this is an a absolutely a phenomenal cigar matter of fact they have a 50 year version which we do have i think a couple episodes from now yeah. that we'll be doing which celebrates the 50 year anniversary of the Toronto family escaping from Cuba, mm -hmm. which I found to be quite interesting. But that's a whole different flavor profile. Mm -hmm. um, this one I absolutely like because it, this is a five country blend. Uh, this one has Honduran, Dominican, Mexican, Nicaraguan, Costa Rican tobaccos. I mean, it's, I can't say it enough. It is extremely well built the craftsmanship very few veins on it you can't even see the seams where they put this thing together um it also has a, a habana wrapper uh which i mean for me this is you can't get much better than this this is beauty in a beauty wrapped up in yeah. a stick well you want to fire these things yeah up? i do because I'm, I'm done talking about it and i don't <laughs> want to get into it A little bit of a little bit of chocolate there yeah it's uh, a very uh good smell yeah you yeah. don't get a chocolate a little bit of nut not much though chocolate nuts what i got out of that i'll use the baby mm -hmm. he's a big boy cigar you can look forward to smoking every once in a while. Yeah. Just off of <clears throat> first drags. You can kind of taste that chocolate a little bit too. Sometimes that aroma it fools you a little bit. Yeah. Like you'll smell one thing but you'll taste another. This is kind of picking up what you're exactly what you're smelling you're picking up. You're picking up in the flavor as well. These are box pressed too. So they're nice to hold. They got that. Well, for people who don't know what that is, I mean, explain a little bit of the difference. I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of the box press. Um, there's, there's really only a couple of kinds of rolls that you can do on it, but box press is by far my favorite. But yeah, go ahead and uh, box tell presses them. are uh, obviously 
the shapes of them are a little different. They're not round. Uh, the wrappers in that are a little oily in that so they can keep their, their roundness. And uh, this is the constructions of them, great. They're not world wavy and at least the Toronto's are very uh, wow. well constructed. That draw is impressive. I mean, absolutely impressive. This thing, the, the bur okay, so I don't know if you can actually see this a little bit. Actually, you know what, Weech, can we get a, get a close up on this here real quick before I fix this? So this burn rate, just so everybody, we, we just are all around producer, director, head bitch. But if you actually see this, the burn is just a little bit off on, uh, on that. To correct that, you'll see some guys, if, if depending on what cigar shop you go to, you'll see them pull out a lighter and they'll just they'll correct it a little bit. And that just gets it to burn evenly. You don't have to do that. That's just something that I prefer to do. And you also saw me do two different lighters here. This is enough to burn your house down. Yeah. And it actually turns pink. And then my other one I use for correction on it. Mm. There's some, uh, aside from that chocolate and that nutty, there's a little earth, a little earthy of a flavor in there. That draw is amazing though. Yeah. See, see, some cigars, when you, when you get into them, it's almost like trying to, actually I'm going to quote Eddie Murphy here from a, oh, yeah. a movie back in the... Was it 80s? Was Beverly Hills Cop 2? Was that an 80s thing? Okay, so Beverly Hills Cop 2 said, suck a golf ball through a garden hose. I'm not going to expound any more on where that saying was coming from, but some cigars, it, it feels like you're just pulling and you're pulling and you can't get nothing. Yeah, this yeah. one, I mean, you slightly suck on this thing and it's, it's coming right through. I'm definitely getting them earthy tones. Pulling a little bit of spice off. There is some slight spice. I, you know, I've, I have had a couple of these. Um, I never picked up spice before, but there is a little bit there. I'm gonna say it's maybe red pepper. The burn rate so far on mine is it's not too bad. It's a little wavy. Yeah, nothing, yours is actually nothing, doing a little better than mine. Yeah, nothing too out of control. <clears throat> I'm almost oh, maybe three-quarters of the way through my first third and that spice went away on mine I don't know what that's doing on yours I'm just getting into it it's still I got that nutty chocolatey flavor very, yeah, very slight spice it's like right there on the tip of my tongue mine went away mine actually went away a little bit it was disappointing because it was actually a very pleasant spice sometimes it's not sometimes you get that spice that's overbearing mm -hmm. this wasn't it was actually really nice But, <clears throat> I talked about the book, so let me get into this book a little bit more. This here is my book. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. Several people have actually seen this book. Now, <clears throat> this book, this is what started this entire show. Um, I was rotating my wine. Now, anybody who knows me from my past, <clears throat> I lied. <coughs> There's that spice again. <laughs> it got me. <coughs> Um, anybody who knows me from my past knows that I lived in Las Vegas. I was a chef out there, and I'm actually a big wine connoisseur. Well, back in October 2020, I was rotating my wine bottles, and I come across one of my old uh, wine journals. Now, my wine journal, I used to keep for all any new bottle that I would, would try or I would taste. I would write down all the characteristics, everything I thought of it, and I wondered why I didn't have a cigar book. I mean, do you have any idea how many cigars I've forgotten? I've been smoking Probably cigars. Probably more cigars than I've smoked. Well, I, I've been smoking cigars since I was 19 years old, and I'm 36 now. So I've smoked a lot of cigars. So I had the idea to start keeping them in a journal, and that's where this thing came into play. I take the label off. Oh, matter of fact, there's the Carlos Toronto mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. uh, I take the label off. I write what I think. I give it a grade. Um... If you actually, if you want to know about it, speaking of the grading system, if you want to know a true grade on a cigar, go to Cigar Aficionado Magazine. They have some of the best testers in the world. 
given these things they're they're great on here hmm. but one of them that my cigar aficionado friend mr k had and he actually he, it took him two years to track this thing down it was the Fuente Opus X Forbidden Purple Rain, and it was already aged. It was 2016. And actually, can I get a can I get a zoom on this? Nope, secondary camera not working. <laughs> we'll we'll do this one here. So this is the label from it. This was a $50 cigar. I rated this at a 96, and I believe Cigar Aficionado rated it at a 94 or 95. I thought this thing was spectacular. Now this was a Madura wrapped. You know. Now this was a real Madura. Okay. You know the difference between a real Madura and a fake Madura. Oh, well, a, a, a forced Madura is what they call it. Biggest difference between those is a a, a real Madura, a natural Madura, was grown out in the field with sun and heat. Okay? Forced Maduras, it's forcefully done. They do it in a short period of time to get almost the same effect, but. Obviously, the, the natural way is always better. Yeah, the force Madura is something that they do. Uh, they, they create the environment that's needed, which, you know, go figure. It's already growing outside. Why wouldn't you just leave it outside? But they they create this this environment to get it quicker. It's mm. just like what, what these uh, farmers do to raise more chickens, give them steroids, grow them faster so it can mm. feed the masses. That's the same concept. Not as horrific, but... The same concept. Yeah, that's really the biggest difference between a forced Madura and a real Madura. Now, there is another big difference: the flavor. Yeah, mm -hmm. the flavor of, of that purple rain was absolutely insane, and it actually was a a term that I've created. It's not something you find in the cigar industry. I call it scrumptious. Yeah. You won't hear a cigar guy or gal use the term scrumptious. I I think that comes from, like you said, your cooking background. Yeah. You know, I, I've noticed like when we've had our cigars, you know what I mean, just talking bullshit. You see, you pull out more flavors than I do. And I think that's because you're trained tongue, per se. Well, there's a lot of years being a chef and a lot of years having to taste something and a lot of years trying to recreate something. You tend to want to draw those flavors mm -hmm. out. But, and, and another thing that we do here is, is a lot of these cigars, I mean, we, we pre-test these or they're just something that we've had. Um, some of them we will have on here, which I, there's quite a few on uh, in this season that yeah. we haven't tested. Yeah, there's quite a few that I've looked through that I've never even heard before. Yeah, so we're gonna automatically go into this blind, which is good because you get that first, like, wow, okay, what the hell is that? Yeah. But uh, when we test these ahead of time, it's really so we can give the best information yeah. when we get here. Because we want you to know what these things are. I, the, I think the biggest reason I even wanted to do this show is I find myself doing it sometimes. I know you've done it because mm -hmm. I've been in the humidor with you. But you go to the, any of your local cigar shops and you walk in and you just see this massive, row you know, after row. yeah, shelf after shelf after shelf, and it goes all the way around. And well, your biggest problem is where do you start? Exactly, where do you start? You don't know what anything is. You don't know the flavor profiles mm -hmm. of anything. And then you're standing there. Thank God we have Google nowadays. I remember yeah. when I was a kid, Google didn't exist. Uh, it was called the newspaper. Yeah. That's what we had. Yeah. But you can Google something. Well, having a show like this where you can watch something ahead of time, if you just happen to come across it in the humor, you're like, oh, I remember those two assholes were talking about that. I want to try that. That's the purpose of this. Mm. I think I crossed over. No, almost crossing into my second third. Mm. And you hear us talking about thirds, too. Yeah. Here's another interesting point. <clears throat> These cigars are broke down into thirds. Now, have you ever watched any videos of, of, of them actually rolling these things? Yeah, actually today I was watching videos of uh, them. Ro it's it's an art and how they do it. And oh, yeah. They do it in teams. It's the two same people do it side by side. And most, most cigars are all hand done. Yeah. And it's been done for the same way for God years. knows how long. Years, years, years. <coughs> the, it is impressive. The desks that they set out almost look like mini roll top mm -hmm. desks. And they have all these different tobaccos sitting there. And you'll see them lay out their their leaf, which actually, believe it or not, this wrapper is only about that wide. Mm -hmm. And they're just plucking all these different tobaccos. Well, when they lay them down, 
depending on what they're making, because you never see the label on them when you watch the videos of them doing mm -hmm. it. But when you watch them put these things in, sometimes they're putting different tobaccos in different sections. But well, when you light that thing and it starts to drag down, you're pulling all the flavor from that first third into that second third. Mm -hmm. So now we, we talk about this, say, well, when I first lit this, I tasted a chocolate, I tasted a, a nutty. And then as I'm getting farther through, now I'm picking up an earthy flavor, and then we're picking up that mm -hmm. spice. As it moves through the tobaccos, you're picking up different characteristics of it. The, the purple rain was like, well, this one so far has been a pretty single profile, which is, which is fine. It, it's yeah. a phenomenal tasting cigar. But that purple rain was also a single profile from start to nub. And I smoked that thing down though, I was burning my mustache off. Wow. I mean, it was absolutely scrumptious, but it was the same profile the, the whole way through. It didn't really change. How is your burn rate going on that and one? It's, it's a little wonky. Yeah. And that it's, happens. It's staying pretty good. I mean, it's a little wavy. I think it, it kind of hey, Before, has before a little... you ash that, show, hold that in front of your camera. That's that white we're talking about. That white right there, there was a lot of nitrogen in the ground. Yeah. Now, I'm not getting, mine's not really that yeah. as white as yours is. Mm -hmm. Close, but not, oh shit. And it's, it's pretty stern, like I. <laughs> you can't even dump that yeah, one yet. I don't, I don't force ass a, a cigar. Um, it helps keep your cherry cool. You want to keep your cherry as cool as you possibly can without going out. And um, roughly about 45 seconds of puff usually keeps it going, not too hot. You know, you know, obviously you don't want it to go out and you don't even get your cherry too hot, it scorches your flavor. Yeah, you know, and that's another thing. When you're actually ready to put these out, a lot of guys like to jam them, just set it down. Yeah. If you don't touch it in it's 30 to 60 seconds, dude, it's gonna go out. You ain't gonna even have to worry about it. But I'm about to creep into my second third here, but before we do that, and I think you got a little ways to go. Yeah. Amateur. <laughs> uh, before we do that, we're going to take a quick uh, sponsor break because although this show is completely by us, we do have a few people that have helped us along the way. Not with the scars, we do pay for those. Uh, but we're going to hear from them and then well, we'll be back shortly. We'll see you in a few. The Cigar Lounge is sponsored in part by Rockstar Divisions. Get yourself the Rockstar treatment today. We offer lawn care, landscaping, tree services, and leaf removal. Whether it's spring, summer, or fall, we have the services for you. Give us a call today, 724-605-5135, and get the Rockstar treatment that you deserve. La Vega Cigar Company by Aaron Paletta, brought to you today by Worby Films. Get your La Vega Cigar today. Choose from the Il Primo or the Il Segundo, sold exclusively by Worby Films and the Cigar Lounge Cigar Show. Weedworks Photography believes in all your adventures. From graduating seniors to capturing the magic of your wedding day, to corporate events and restaurant openings, and everything in between. Weedworks Photography is here to tell your story. Photographer Alexa Paletta believes in a simple approach, that no vision, dream, or memory to be made magic should ever be out of reach. For more information, visit Weedworks.com. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I know we took our, our short little mm -hmm. uh, sponsor break there. Um, I've already creeped into my, my second third and, and it is maintaining its single profile. Although that spice did come back a little bit. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting into my second third. And uh, I, I think mine's burning a lot slower than yours. It could be just the way I draw, but well, or a different batch too. I, I think it is because I purchased this Oh, maybe three months ago, and I've been aging it a little bit. So, when did you get yours? That was a couple. When we went up to the the box car. Oh yeah, weeks box ago. car cigar in Volant, Pennsylvania. A uh, good friend of ours, Bobby. He actually, I lied. He did sponsor four cigars. This is not one of them, but he did sponsor four cigars for this this season. Um, but we did pick these up there, and yeah, we had to add two different batches. Yeah, I, we can definitely tell by the ash. Yeah, mine's, yeah, but then again, I love this, so I'm sucking the hell out of this Yeah, thing. I, I'm enjoying it. It's, this is definitely what we, I would say a smokable cigar. Yeah, now, smokable, yeah, you know it. You want to mm -hmm. explain it? Because you've never met mm -hmm. Mr. K. Smoke is a smokable cigar is, like if you go to your buddy's house and you forgot your smoking cigar or your traveling humidor, and he hands you a cigar, here, I got you covered for today. Well, if you smoke it, without putting it out, 
It's a smokable cigar. It's something that you would smoke, maybe not go out and buy, but you would smoke it without putting it out. So it's a smokable cigar. So, yeah, I would say this is a, a smokable cigar. I might keep one or two in one hand. I do actually have three of these hmm. in my aging humidor. Now, I have six humidors. How many you got? One? Two. Oh. Three, three is on the way. Oh, my three traveling is on the way? one is on the way. I have six humidors. Um, two of them were bought for me by my wife for our 11th wedding anniversary, which we just had. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Oh, uh, yeah, well, 11 years. Hey. See the smirk on <laughs> Weege's face. She knows. Yeah. But you know, I blame her. She didn't have to say I do. Anyway, so I have, I have six humidors. Two of them are set up for aging. I want to explain this process a little bit. When I age something, I do it a little bit different than I'm going to be keeping these. All these cigars that we have for the show, I have them in their plastic. It's in a humidor that's down here uh, on site. When it comes time to do it, I pull it out of the plastic and I go. When I have them in my tabletop humidor, which is my main humidor, and, and you've seen it's yeah. all the glass top, those are the ones that I smoke on the regular. Those are my favorite cigars. My travel humidor, same thing. That's yeah. I'm pulling things back and forth. And I have another travel humidor that's probably about, yay, you can hold like 15 to 20 cigars depending on the size of them. That one I have a new brand of cigars, which actually I'm going to announce now. I have my own brand coming out. They're called La Vega. And the first one is Il Primo, which is Italian for the first. Um, but I keep some of my cigars in there. When I go to age these cigars, I have the crystals, then the humidor solution, I use the sticks, I use the packets, like I use a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I took a page out of Mr. K's book. When he ages them, everything comes out of the plastic. I, I don't want, because the humidity doesn't really get to them when you, when you have them yeah. in the plastic. That's kind of like blocking it out. So then they dry out real bad. Now, in a, in a humidor, in a store, you have to keep them in. Yeah. In the plastic, because you know, I don't want nobody touching my stuff, especially yeah. with this COVID nonsense yeah. going on. You never know who's going to pick up and. Exactly. I don't, I don't know where that finger's been, <laughs> so I don't want you touching this car that I'm about yeah. to smoke. But I, I pull them out, I arrange them real nice, and I close it. And I leave that closed for a month. Now, I picked up this technique because of Mr. K and how he told me. Essentially, we're burping it. Once a month, I open it up 10, 15 minutes. I, I check all my stuff, make sure the humidity is where it's supposed to be. The rule is 70-70, 70% humidity, 70 degrees. My aging one, I leave about 67, 68. I don't, I don't want it too, too, too humid, more, yeah. but I also don't want it to where it's gonna dry out. So I keep that, those two humidors at about 67, 68 degrees, or uh, uh, percent humidity. Hmm. Now the humidor solution, let me briefly explain this because a lot of people don't know about humidor solution. Some of the old timers, they'll just use distilled water. That's all they use when it, in their humidors. That's good. The distilled water, it, it, it doesn't allow for any, anything weird to grow. Yeah. Any bacteria and Everything stuff Everything's like boiled out of it. It's pure. P pretty much. Yeah. I use a 50% propylene glycol, food grade, and 50% um, distilled, water. distilled water. Because when propylene glycol actually evaporates, it doesn't evaporate past 70%. So if you're looking for that 70 rule, that's the perfect thing to use because it ain't going any lower than that. Yeah. And the only time it goes any lower than 70% 70, uh, 70 humidity in my humidors is if they're running low. Because I use the little pucks or I use the sticks or yeah. I use things like that. But those little packets you can throw in there, they keep you know good 60, 68% to 70% packets you can buy. Yeah. And it helps. Have, do you have any specific brands that you use? Like I I look at the packets all the time. I, I prefer the pucks. I can pretty much tell what's in there. Uh, I don't because I, I just use a variety. Okay. I mean, when I first really got into keeping my cigars, I, I went for what was cheap. Now I go for that quality because, as Mr. K would say, and I, I reference Mr. K a lot, but the, the things that that man has taught me about cigars just makes me love the process even more yeah i'm an artistic person um Weech is an artistic person you are an artistic person if you're going to have good cigars give them a good home you're, you're not going to take a million dollar yeah. necklace and put it inside of a shack yep give it a good home 
So yep. I, I tend to change my things around a little the, bit. <clears throat> kind of how some, what I would say is you take care of your equipment, your equipment will take care of you. Yep. You can say you take care of your cigars, it will take care of you. You know what I mean? You're not going to get a cigar that splits apart because it's too dry or you can't smoke it because it's sopping yeah, wet. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes that happens. I mean, don't, don't feel horrible yeah. if your cigar starts to break apart on you. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. It happens. There's nothing you can do about it. Just you can try to prevent a little bit of it. You can try to prevent it. That's that's about yeah. all I can I can say on that. Where are you at? Because I'm I'm well into my second third now, mm -hmm. and I and nothing's really changed. No, that uh, spice did go away though. Yeah, I think it's gone. I hit it every once in a while. Like that first third, I had it for most of it. Then it went away, and then every once in a while, I'll get that little little tingle on the tongue. But it ain't. It's not overpowering and it's not bad, but overall, it's just that 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 forest, that press freaking it's just smoking so well. I I love the press. Easy to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Box press is one of my favorites. Yeah, the, my favorite styles. You've got a hell of an ash going on there. Yeah, and it's 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 and it on there. And it doesn't and don't want to come off. No, it's and that, I think that has a lot to do with the box press. It's, it's a very dense. Obviously, it's pressed, so it's... It's interesting how they do that. They actually press those for something like 45 days or something like that. I can't even remember what yeah, the hell it when, is. I'd have to look at it again. I do believe, don't quote me, but I do believe when... Because, like I said, cigar rollers, they normally do it in teams. The guy will lay out the tobacco in a certain order, you know what I mean? Like you said, they got, got them all over. And this is five different countries of tobacco. So he's pulling a leaf from here, a leaf from there, laying them right. And then he runs it through his his roller, <coughs> which is not a it's not really a me mechanism or no, a mechanical. Actually, it's no, because what no, because when they after they roll these, all these get rolled into just regular tubes. Mm -hmm. But when they do the box press, and I don't know if you've actually watched any videos, I watched a video to see it. They have these trays, almost looks mm -hmm. like egg egg crates, mm -hmm. but you know long boxes, and they lay these cigars in there. They put the cap on it. They stack like twenty of yeah. these boxes up, and then they compress it down. And, and they, like a vice kind. Yeah. Of, and they they do sit. I mean every brand or whatever does it oh there it goes yep oh look at that burn rate perfect well don't like show me show tip. them shit. yeah like perfect pencil tip you know it's not barrow burrowing or however you want to say it us pennsylvanians got a little bit of an accent uh, you spent too much time in uh, vegas i think uh, yeah well <laughs> <laughs> they they reminded us out there that we had an accent i mm -hmm. told them it's all yins that can't talk so <laughs> The hell with you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually going to go to our final sponsor break, uh, but when we come back, we do have some news. We got some 2020 releases, just in case you missed them. We've got some um, pretty interesting 2021 releases, and depending on when this actually uh, this yeah. episode airs, or whether or not it'll be out. But there's there's some some good stuff coming up. So stick around, and we'll uh, we'll go over that when we come back from this break. The Cigar Lounge is sponsored in part by. Rockstar Divisions. Get yourself the Rockstar treatment today. We offer lawn care, landscaping, tree services, and leaf removal. Whether it's spring, summer, or fall, we have the services for you. Give us a call today, 724-605-5135, and get the Rockstar treatment that you deserve. La Vega Cigar Company by Aaron Paletta, brought to you today by Worby Films. Get your La Vega cigar today. Choose from the Il Primo or the Il Segundo, sold exclusively by Werby Films and the Cigar Lounge Cigar Show. Weedworks Photography believes in all your adventures. From graduating seniors to capturing the magic of your wedding day, to corporate events and restaurant openings, and everything in between. Weedworks Photography is here to tell your story. Photographer Alexa Paletta believes in a simple approach, that no vision, dream, or memory to be made magic should ever be out of reach. For more information, visit weedgeworks.com. Hey yep. guys, welcome back. Um, so we're going to get into some 2020 releases. Now, we are into 2021, but just in case you missed them, and this is for any of you experienced cigar aficionados or anybody who's wanting to get into it, um, I'll tell you this, half wheel. <coughs> Half Wheel is a cigar website that knows everything. They know everything before it comes out. If, if Mr. Fuentes has to go to the bathroom, they know about it. 
So that is the perfect place if you want to go catch up on any information, uh, on any new releases, anything that you might have missed. Here's some 2020s. Uh, let's see, we got the Aging Room Quattro, Nicaragua. Um, it came out on, I believe, November 1st. And that was a scheduled release. We got the Aladino Cameroon that came out. That came out December 11th, 2020. Um, and both of those were line extensions. So they already had a line of those out that they just added something new to it. Now, here's, we're gonna get into these. Alec Bradley, we have a few, actually, no, we got five. Mm -hmm. I think we have five Alec Bradleys coming up on this show in the first season. And I have to say one of them I am beyond a fan of. Matter of fact, I bought an entire box of 25 and they're currently sitting in one of my humidors. When that episode comes, you'll know because I'll be smiling from ear to ear. But Alec Bradley came up with the, oh, Jesus, uh, Kitsuji, I think is how you pronounce that. <laughs> the Kitsuji, Corona, Gorda, the Gordo, the Robusto, and the Toro. And those all came out on December 3rd. 2020. So they've been out about a month now. Well, yeah, we're, a little over we're a month. what are we in? We're in January, right? Yeah. So we, yeah, we're filming in pre filming in January. So yeah, yeah they've been out a little over a month. I, we've yet to taste these. Matter of fact, these might have to go in season two because season one is already completely booked up with cigars. Uh, but I do want to try that. I am a huge fan of, of Alec Bradley. Um, they, I, I don't think that, in my opinion, they're not a mid range cigar. When, you, when you're pulling yeah. ranking numbers like 92, 93, 94, like they do, to me, you're top shelf. I mm -hmm. mean, you are, to, and if you're in the 80s, I could see that, but just because you have a rating in the 80s doesn't mean that you're a bad cigar. It, uh, for me, it, it all comes down to taste, but in the 90s is better. Yeah. And some of them Alec Bradley's that we have coming up on, on this season, they were all in the 90s, every one of them. But definitely go out and, and check those out. I, I really do want to test that line. Uh, now, <clears throat> if there's if you guys are watching and there's a, a cigar that you maybe want us to try, email us. Um, the email will be put at the very end of this episode. Email us. Let us know. Tell us what you think about it. We'll pull that. We'll we'll have your name on there. We'll we'll run our review versus your review. Yeah. Now, the written review of, of what we think of these is actually going to be posted as well. And any of these little extras that I, I put on there for me and, and uh, Mr. K's weekly cigar night, those will also be posted because, well, let's face it, I'm not going to spend 50 bucks on a cigar to bring on here and smoke. Mm -hmm. And it, it just ain't going to happen. I have a hard time coming out of my pocket to burn up 50 bucks. But there's, to me, you got to enjoy the small things. So if I'm going to enjoy a $50 cigar, it's going to be that right occasion. Yeah, and that's not here on set. That's going to be in yeah. a cigar lounge with, mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of people, and we're all going to chat about it. Yep. But those are some of the 2020s that, uh, just in case you missed them, you've got the 2021s, and I do mm. want to hear about those. So pull those out. Yeah. Mm. Released. All right. We got the uh, 601 Black Tiro. It's a uh, Nicaraguan. It's, uh, it's the release date's... Uh, the first of the year, so this one should have been uh, released. So that was already out. Yeah, this should be. It, you, know, you know how they go. Sometimes they say they're going to and they're not, but this one should already be out. Actually, right, so we should look into that one. Alec Bradley's got some even more coming out at the beginning of this year. Hopefully. It's uh, the PCA 2021 exclusive. It's another exclusive, and uh, it's that one's to be determined. They're, they're so they probably, still don't have a date on that no, one No, they're probably waiting for that one. Um, now, see, sometimes when, when we're pulling this information, and you'll see the same thing if you go to Half Wheel, um, sometimes they pre-announce these lines, and they just don't know when it's going to be ready to go. But it is a 2020 release. That yeah. is off the, or excuse me, 2021. That's yeah. off the 2021 page? Yes, sir. Then it's coming out this year sometime. Or Molda, if I'm saying that right. Signature Series Connecticut Cannoli. Um, that's supposed to be that's supposed to be out on the first two. Connecticut, that's actually a pretty scrumptious tobacco. Really? Oh yeah. See, I've, that I don't think we have any in this season mm. that are Connecticut. Yeah, we're gonna have to. But I have one I can give you. Hmm. I would like to try it. I would like the money for that. <laughs> uh, another Amanda series. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. I'm terrible at. Probably not. Uh, it's an habanero cannoli. cannoli? And that one's supposed to be out 
beginning of the year too. I, actually, so, so, a lot so a of couple, these are. A couple of those might already be out then. Yeah. Let me see it. It's one, it's, it doesn't have the actual day of the month, but it's the first month. Amendola signature. Amendola, yeah. Amendola. Hey, I'm from the backwoods of Pennsylvania. I don't care, that's no excuse. Shit. Art of Magic, <laughs> they've got one coming out. That Actually, all these should be out, with the exception mm -hmm. of the Alec Bradley PCA. That's the only one that's... Uh, I've never heard of the Art of Magic. Have you? Yeah, I have. And, that's when, and, that, and they're, they're releasing a new line. Matter of fact, every single one of those that he just read off, the two Amendolas, the 601 Black Toro, the Alec Bradley, and the Art of Magic, those are all new lines. That's not an extension off of anything. Those are all brand new lines. Hmm. You know what? Maybe with this corona going on there, these cigar guys are like, Everybody, nobody's got anything better to do. Sit at home and enjoy a good cigar. Let's let's try I, to give I'm, them something new. I'm not going to complain. No, either give am I. Give me something new to, to try. Yeah. Because now that I'm keeping tabs in my in my book, I mean, I'm all down. Mm. How you how you doing? I'm into my final third, by the way, and noth nothing's actually changed. This is this has been a pretty solid single profile the whole way through. I've had mm. no issues with this. It is getting a little hot, and when a cigar gets hot. Normally, ashy flavor tends to follow, and you're getting about to the end of the life of that. Sometimes you, sometimes you can get it all the way down to where it's burning your lips, and mm. sometimes you got a little bit left over. Nice, solid taste. It's going through quite well. Um, the burn I, rate on it is still I'm, a little weird, but I I'm had in my it. final third, and that earthy has taken over. I mean, has it's it? it's been pretty much swapping positions this entire time. Um, First it was a chocolate and it was a nutty and then it was the nutty and then the earthy and then it, it's the same flavors just some are standing out more than others uh, But it, it's been it's been a great it's been a great cigar But that's our our 20 2020s 2021s our Our, our thoughts, thoughts on yep. on this uh, We really appreciate you guys tuning in yes, uh, Check us out on uh, oh, Are we even are we doing Facebook by the time this releases? Mm. Maybe Maybe. Look for us online. You can go to f2cproductions.com, go to the Cigar Lounge tab. We've got stuff for, that we're selling on there, some humidor solutions. We've got some frame label things, might have some humidors coming up. My signature line of cigars is coming out on there. But more importantly, the videos and the reviews. And mm -hmm. that's really what we want you guys to check out. Hopefully these, these videos and these reviews help you when you go into a humidor. Maybe it'll help you pick out something that now you can be a little bit familiar with. But... Uh, Here's to good smoking, and we'll see you guys next time.